रामलो र भरपर तो इंटरनेट र टीवी चाहियो वाया नेट र वाया टीवी को साथ ले पाइयो रिम्बुचे नमस्कार नमस्ते I'm so delighted that uh, you have agreed to come here and have a conversation with me. Thank you. Because this is actually going to be a conversation. It's not yes. a hardcore interview or anything. Yes. Um, just going to talk about various things. Yes. Um, you know, I had uh, listened to your uh, discourses in YouTube and yes. everything. You had talked about your, your childhood uh, time in. Right. Was it in Gorkha? Yeah, Gorkha Manasilo. So my hometown name is Samagao. Right. So Samagao is the in front of Manasilo Mountain. We have the village. So I was born there. Oh. Yes. So were you born into this uh, uh, monkhood family, or was yeah. your father in the same line? So my family has um, kind of like meditative tradition. Then my father and my grandfather, they all are meditators. And also my grandmother also. So I was born in very kind of like a gifted family. And sometimes what I call, I need just being born. And right after I being born, I have two things. My teacher, meditation teacher, and my father. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Buy one, get one free. <laughs> so you were, you said you were born in a meditative, what, traditional Tradition. family? Yes. So what do you exactly mean by meditation? Like, you know, I wonder, like, I know how you meditate, but I, I'm just wondering how your father or your grandfather would meditate, you know, in that atmosphere. Yes. Is it the similar kind of meditation or was it different? And what yes. exactly is meditation? So, my father's style of meditation is uh, more like, how to say, experiential style. So my father don't use too much about the rituals, a pray, mantra, not much. But from my grandfather, he combined together praying and the ritual and puja, like that kind of tradition together. So the meaning of meditation is learning how to be with the, yourself, be with your mind, special, and whatever comes in the mind, whatever perception, form, sound, smell, touch, sensation, thought, emotion, learning how to be with that. Mm. So when we learn how to be with that, that is what we call awareness, yeah. awareness of the mind. But yes. is that the main problem with the human beings, not being able to cope with your own thoughts? Yeah. And with your uh, own mind? Right. Is that, the, is that the problem with human beings? Yeah, so I think what we call, we lost. We lost with the thought, we lost with the emotion, we lost with the, <clears throat> what we call, crazy monkey mind. So we always have this monkey mind, pala 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 yeah. yada 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 right, yada yada. Right. And then normally what happened, we are become one with that. And we don't see our thought. We know that we are thinking, but we don't know how to be with it. But when we learn how to be with our thought, emotion, perception, then we get freedom. So what we call, when you see the river, you are out of river automatically you are become out of river. And river is still there. Mm -hmm. We don't need to stop the river. So bala bala bala, yara yara, thought, emotion, everything, you don't need to stop. They can come and they can go, but what we are learning is we are learning how to be with that. What we call um, connecting with the awareness oh. through thought, through emotion, and they will not become bothered. Uh, we are not lost with it. And many people think meditation meaning think of nothing. 
stop thinking. Right, which is impossible. Impossible. <laughs> It's just not possible. <laughs> uh, if, if yeah, it, that's what I mean. People say, okay, I meditate every day in the morning for half an hour, one hour. Yes, yes, yes. And the way they meditate is they go sit across and close their eyes and try to focus in one thing and not right. to think about anything yes, else. Yes, yes, yes. But I think in half an hour, one hour, it's not possible at all. And they're they're just sitting in one place and closing their eyes. That's about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So then, what we feel like, I'm become failure. I cannot meditate. Right. For example, when we say, don't think about dal bath. You know, in Nepal dal bath is my my favorite food. Not dal bath. Not dal bath. What happened? We think about dal bath more. Correct. Various dal bath, different kind of dal bath pop up. So the more you said don't think, the monkey mind does the opposite, and then the, you think more. <laughs> <laughs> so thoughts, emotion, and perception is probably more or less the same with all human beings. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's not exceptional with you or yes. or me or someone else. You know. Yes. It's the same similar kind of thing. But what we do with our thoughts, yes. emotions, and perception, yes, is what makes us different. Yeah. No. Yes. Yes. Because exactly, as a human being, we can have similar thoughts. Yes. Similar emotions. Yes. You can have similar thoughts to my thoughts. Yes. You can have similar emotion. You can have emotion of anger. You can have emotion of love. Or excuse me, but you can also have emotion of lust. But how you handle that emotion? Yes. Yes. Makes one person different from the other. Yes, is that it? That's true. Exactly what you said. So everybody has thought, emotion, feeling, or maybe strong emotion, worry, panic, anxiety, loneliness, grief, right, hatred, anger, jealousy, desire. So many of those is normal. But how to? What we call the relationship between you and your monkey mind is key thing. Monkey mind talk, bala bala bala, yada yada yada, you know, restless. It is not good, not bad. But if you lost with the monkey mind, monkey mind is quite crazy. Right. Then we become like crazy. Or if you fight with the monkey mind, what happen? Monkey mind become your enemy. And then you need to always fight with the monkey mind. <laughs> <laughs> so fight or slave. You say yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then monkey mind become your boss. What we call crazy boss. <laughs> right. But here in the meditation, what we are learning is we are not fighting, but we are not also become slave. We are being with the monkey mind, and actually. Monkey mind can become support for meditation. What we call object of meditation, object of awareness, object of love and compassion, object of wisdom. So we can learn from monkey mind. We can grow. In fact, we can get happiness from the monkey mind. So that's the. Sometimes what we call the secret of our own mind, how to free, using by these mm -hmm. monkey mind, crazy mind. But, is it but we can free. Is it possible uh, to be absolutely free from monkey mind? Because if you are leading your day-to-day -day life, practical life, you know, there's so many things that is not within your control. You know, a lot of things can happen to you which can affect your mind. Uh, people, human beings' life is so uncertain. You know, they're uncertain about uh, their future. They're uncertain about their health. They're certain uncertain about the health of their loved ones. They are, are uncertain about their profession, how they are going to feed themselves, how they're going to feed their family. So, with all these things, which is beyond human beings' control. Doesn't that all affect a person? And it's very, very difficult. No matter how hard a person tries to be calm and relax. Yeah, if we try to get rid of monkey mind, that's impossible. If we try to stop pain, try to stop thinking, try to stop、uh, clashes, thought, emotion, 
then it's impossible. What I call it. mission impossible. Right, right. <laughs> But if we make friends with the monkey mind, that is possible. So we don't need to get rid of monkey mind. We don't need to change monkey mind. But do we also need to make friends with uh, all kind of situation that we face? Emotionally. Emotionally. But in the reality, some you can fix, some yeah. you cannot fix. So reality, the life situation, sometimes we cannot control. So you got to, you got your make, mind. So you got to make friends with all situations. Your mind. Yeah. No need to make friends with all the situations. It's impossible sometimes. Right. But you can make friends with your own mind, because. Suffering or destructive emotion is in your mind, and your mind always in your hand. Even though you are having really difficult time in your life, in your family, but you can get peace. Right. You can get wisdom from your own mind, and that having that peace and wisdom from your own mind. Can help also how to manage your your life like indirectly. But you should try to have peace in your own mind in spite of the trouble around yes. you, right? Can. Huh? Yes. You got because trouble outside you cannot control. Control, yeah. There's nothing you cannot control. Yes, yes. yes. You know the fear of your future, the fear of your life. Simple yes. thing as fear of your health. We don't know what's going to happen. You know. Yeah. So that fear is always there. So I think, uh, is it like in life is um, except are we uh, becoming too ambitious or greed by wanting only happiness and peace in life because life does not only offer you that. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. So maybe uh, life is all about accepting all kinds of weather. Yes, yes, yes. And yet. Accepting that and yet finding peace. Yes, yes, yes. In spite of all that. Yeah. You cannot have summer or spring all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know there will yeah. be winter. There will be rainy season. Yes, yes, yes. So it's probably a similar thing with other situations yes, in life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But no matter what you try to have, yes. you accept that. Yes. You. But you accept that, but you're not give up. So right. sometimes what we call even death, fear of death, and the death. Which one is more painful? Fear of death is more painful right. than death itself. So a lot of things our mind is creating, and then we exaggerate, and that impact our life more, more become more problem. For example, in 1998, there was a big financial crisis in Malaysia. So one of the, my friend's friend. I、was、uh, playing stock market, you know, stock market. Yes.、Yeah, Tra- trading the stock market,、right. and he is a millionaire. He is very rich, but within a few months, he lost everything because stock market collapsed. From millionaire become zillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so he even lost his home, everything. Then he have to move to his friend's place,、right. and he sleep in the friend friend's couch, like in the. Living room, living room, cook for friend, but he is quite still quite okay. You know, some of his friends become crazy. Some they jump off from the high building. Some they cannot do anything. They feel really depressed. But he's still laughing and cooking for friends and then making jokes. And people ask him, "Why you still feel happy? You lost everything. Why you don't feel sad?" And he said. That is the life. Life is up and down. Right. It's impermanent. And I got all this money from the stock market. Now all gone, gone back to stock market. <laughs> so it's, it's impermanent. So, so then what happened? He didn't give up. He he looked for different ways to work with the life. He not feeling depressed, and he start new business. And now he's become millionaire again. Again. Until、yeah. this year, who knows next year, right? Right, right. So maybe you know, a lot of us are only saying, "I want happiness. I want happiness. I want perfect life." And maybe because of that, they are sad. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because they're always chasing happiness. Yeah, right, right. But happiness is not something that you will have it for in, in a permanent basis. Right, you right, know? Right, right. You can, because in life you can have a moment of joy and there can be a moment of sadness. Yes, there yes, can be yes. a moment of other things, you know? Yeah, yeah. So basically, life is all about accepting yeah. your fate. Yes. Is that it? Yeah, accepting, accepting your fate. The reality as it is. So life is up and down. Up and down doesn't mean always bad. Right. Up and down meaning always have opportunity. New doors, new possibilities, new way of um, solving the problem. For sometimes what I call, if you want to go to somewhere and the road is blocked by huge wall, wall in front of you, so nowhere to go. So what should we do? Maybe one choice, I want to go through this wall and hit your head to the wall. I need to go through, you know. It doesn't help. You mm. cannot go through that. Impossible. But there's another way. Maybe look around. Hmm. Maybe I will bring, bring staircase, staircase. Put there and you can climb staircase, go behind, behind the wall. Or maybe bring a rope. Or maybe go around. Who knows, maybe somewhere below. So that's full of possibility. But so, when we, as you said, if we only fix with the one possibility, yeah, yeah, yeah. then we don't see other opportunity, other doors, potentials, possibilities, yeah. which are still there. So challenges is, is inevitable. You'll have challenges yes. in life, right? Yes, yes. Because nobody's... I'm, I'm sure you don't say that and nobody's going to say that life is going to be easy all the time. Right, right, right. Relaxing. It's not, life is not going to be like walking on the flowers all right, the time, right, right. you know? Yes, yes. Uh, but when you face challenges, there's always a way to overcome that yes. hurdle in some way yes, or yes. the other. So maybe a, a lot of people who say that, you know, if I get this, I will be happy. If I achieve this, I will be happy. And they're constantly chasing happiness. Right. And life is, I mean, you know better, it's never permanent. Right. One time you may have health and no money. Another time you might have money and no health. Yes, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> One time you want to enjoy things and you're not getting anything. Right, right, right. Another time you're getting everything and you're not able to enjoy it. Right. <laughs> yes. So, so life comes with all that yeah. kind of obstacles. Obstacles, you know? of, of course. So just to say that, you know, if I get this, I will be happy. If I achieve this, I'll be happy. If I, I have a phone now, if I get another phone, I will be happy. My car is five years old. If I get that car, I will be happy. That is not the way to happiness, is yeah. it? Yeah, no. That is a, create more problem. Yeah. So now, nowadays, the scientists, they... They did a lot of research about happiness. And then they look for a few things. One is winning lottery. In America, if you win the lottery, you will win 80, of, yeah. 80 million to 300 million US dollar. Mm. So Nepal become many, 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 many karo, thousands of karo, right? Right. So when you win that, then they check with your happiness level. So you will be happy maximum two years and after that back to the baseline meaning everybody has some kind of like baseline like a little bit happy or not happy anxious or a little bit angry or a little bit some kind of baseline come back to the baseline and that was the 10 years before recently i went to usa they said now is only a few months <laughs> oh okay. meaning lottery happy become few months back to baseline and they look for marriage. 10 years before, happiness go up five years. Now, few years only. <laughs> back to good marriage, you know, back to baseline. Uh, I mean, in, 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 the, in the America, but not maybe in Nepal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nepal may be different, right? <laughs> right. And, and same thing with the salary. So if you're working in the company, you are receiving the highest salary among others, you feel quite happy for a while. Then there's a, some kind of like average salary. If you go beyond that average salary, even you get millions, you will not get extra right. happy. Right. 
So whatever they do, the baseline doesn't change. But then they look at the meditator. For example, one of the meditation practice, watching the breath, breathing meditation. Breathing in, breathing out. I learned this when I was nine years old. And I feel so boring and stupid, you know. <laughs> because I know I'm breathing. Why I have to know every day I'm breathing in, breathing out. But in fact, that practice, it can help to change baseline. Even you are not meditating, you might become happier. So now compare winning lottery or watching boring breathing. Which one is good for happiness? Watching breathing yeah. is more benefit for the happiness. Why? Because normally what we call when we learn how to let go and to connect with our what we call a fundamental quality. Our inner right? self. Awareness itself. Then we become more, more happy. <clears throat> so every, every emotion has an expiry date. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. What I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, my analysis is uh, there's a pleasure and there's a joy. Yes. Right? Yes. What you were talking about right now. Yeah. Pleasure is you have to constantly seek. Yes, yes, yes. Because you, you say... Okay, if I get this car, I'll be very pleasurable. Yes, yes. But once you get that car, you want another car after yes, two years. Yes. There's always seeking. There's not never yes. enough. Yes, yes. You go in the evening and enjoy, I don't know, in the bar or in the lounge. And the time in the bar and in the lounge is going to last for two hours, four hours, five hours, and it's going to be finished. Yes. And then you think, oh, my pleasure time is gone. So tomorrow I need more. Yes. Pleasure is constantly seeking. Yes. And, and a lot of people mistake pleasure with joy and happiness. And especially with the material thing. Material With things. object, with things. Yeah. Right. Because like you said, joy comes inside from your within. Yes, so within. if you are in a joyful position, yes. then you're no longer into a seeking position. Yes. Is that true? Yeah, true. So there's a, I have one student, couple, so they, uh, at the beginning, they have simple kind of a family background and they both are very talented. So they graduated very top university and then they got very good job. The salary is very good and they bought new house and so happy. They are very happy. And then one day they come to me and they said they want to change the location. So where they're staying, like middle class area, they want to move to the oh. high class area. I say, oh, okay, that's good. And they move. And they bought new house. Then they look around the neighbors. Wow. The other neighbor had Mazetica, BMW, fancy shoes. And every day they look at those and they look at each other. We don't have BMW. We don't have Mercedes. Right. We don't have this. And they keep buying. And then slowly, slowly, they feel very uncomfortable. And they both are quarreling each other. And then, and slowly, slowly, they have physical illness. You know, they are burned out, not happy. And a lot of things happen. So and are, then are, what happened? They, they come to me. They said, we moved to this new place. After that, I, our life become very unhappy. Why is that? Maybe they believe about the feng shui, you know, feng, feng shui, maybe energy in the house oh, or, oh. or something wrong with that. I said, mm, the problem is you are not appreciating what you have. Right. The um, gratitude, appreciation, not satisfying what you have. Before you are very happy because you are appreciating what you have. But now your neighbor's happiness become cause for suffering for you. Mm. And they both said, yes. And they recognize and slowly, slowly, they let go of that. Then I think later they feel more content and right. then their health come back. They, they look, take care of their health, relationship got better and the work also get better. Right, so more than looking after our own needs, <clears throat> We are, I think, constantly comparing our life with others. Yes, yes. 
And if it doesn't match with others, yes. there's a constant unhappiness within ourselves. Yes. Yes. Even though what we have can be sufficient yes. by itself. Yes. But because other have better or more, yes. uh, people intend to be unhappy. Yes. Is comparing the main problem these days? Yeah, I think dissatis dissatisfying. Always think this is not good for me. I am not enough. I need more. Then even though you are staying in the golden palace, right. you feel not happy. <laughs> right. Because there are always going to be someone better, yeah. right? Yeah. Someone better, someone younger, someone stronger. You think you are the strongest, but one day someone else will be the stronger yes. than you. So there's a very famous story. When the Buddha was in India, he went to go around baking food. And they were passing through field, empty field. And there's some kind of like precious gem shining and something there. And the one of the Buddhist disciples look for that. And that is precious gem, like diamond. And then the student offered Buddha. Buddha said, oh, I will give this to the poorest person in this country. And the student was very exciting. Oh, really? You know? And he watched Buddha where this uh, diamond goes. And actually Buddha walked through and king came. And Buddha gave this to king. Now student was so confused. Asked Buddha, you said you will give poorest person in this country, <laughs> but you give this to the king. It's greedy all the time. <laughs> king is the richest one. Buddha said, no, no, no. King is the poorest one. Why? Always think not enough. Not enough, no. The other kingdoms have this. I don't have that. So I just suffer. Like recently I was abroad. Yes. And I met this man. Uh, he's the owner of many restaurants there. Mm. And he's made a lot of money in the last 20 years. Right, right, right. And he has, like you said, expensive cars, expensive lifestyle and everything. But 25 years ago, mm. he was, he had a very humble life in India. Mm. He was working as a waiter in one of uh, the restaurants there. Mm. Uh, but he managed to go to Europe and from waiter, he became chef. From chef, he became owners of restaurant and he started owning. And he told me this, you know, this is how I started. Mm. I was a waiter 25 years ago. Then I came to Europe. Someone brought me here to work in a restaurant. Then I started working in a restaurant. Then I became a chef. And now I'm earning this and this is all I have. But he said, you know, I'm not happy now. Yes. I was happier then. He, he told me and then he laughed. You know, yes, so, yes. Really inside, I was much happier then. Right. Because now I'm thinking um, there's not enough. Yes, yes, yes. But at that time, he was more or less little. He thought that this is how much I can get, so I'm okay kind of thing. Right, right, right. But now he says that since I have this much, right. maybe I can get even more. Yes, yes, yes. Since I have three cars, maybe I can get six. Right, right, right. Maybe I can get better models. Right. Maybe I can get more expensive. So he tells me I'm not, <laughs> I'm not happy right now. <laughs> right, right, right. But human psychology is also like, uh, I think this comparing business is uh, making people a lot of sad, you know, these yes, days, yes. especially yeah. with the social yeah. media and everything. Yeah. A lot of youngsters are constantly comparing themselves yes. to someone else. You know, they always want to be like someone else who is better, who is uh, richer, who has better things according to what they see. Yes. And the human psychology, and I think that is unhealthy because yes. the human psychology has become, you know, one guy, one person said is that if you have, if you're living in a one million house right. in an area yes. where all the rest of the houses are less than half a million, right, 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 right. then you feel that you are very superior. For a while. For five years. Yeah, very superior, <laughs> right? Yeah. But if this million dollar house, yes, yes. he takes that money and goes to another area yes. and buys a million dollar house yes. and the rest of the houses are all 
more than five billion. Yes, <laughs> two he's very, yeah. and, and he's very unhappy. Not happy. Yeah. <laughs> True. That's the psychology, yes, isn't it? Yes. Yes. I mean, here he feels so superior. Yeah. So what is this comparing? I mean, even the the technology today is there. You know, people who are using it, they're so dependent on comparing their life with other people's life. Right, right, right. Their looks with other people's looks. Yes, yes, yes. Am I looking better than them or not? Am I having my life more happier according to them than them? Right, right, right. Am I enjoying things much more than them? Right, right, right. Isn't that a is, isn't that a, a constant source of unhappiness yes, and yes. sadness? Yeah, that is sometimes what we call like bottomless bag. Yeah. So there's a bag, no bottom. Whatever you put inside the bags only temporarily there and they're gone so with that dissatisfaction doesn't matter how much you have what area you are what degree you have still suffer and then the the problem is what happened when you're not appreciating what you have mm. when you're not gratitude you know feel happy, happy about your health, then you don't see the quality of what you have. And then almost become like you don't have. Normally, I give example about the watch. So normally, the quality of the watch is tells time. Time, right. Let's say if you have the best watch in the world, maybe very expensive, maybe golden diamond combination watch, and if you not recognize your own watch, watch cannot tell you time, no matter how expensive it is. So maybe you don't know what time is because you don't know your own watch. You thought it's like bracelet, you know, bracelet. Mm -hmm. So then maybe you cannot be on, on time. You're always late to go to office right. or sometimes too early. Right. There's no watch. You don't know your own watch. Then one day your boss said, you fire, you you know, I will expel you. So you lost your job. And if you lost job nowadays, you cannot pay bills. Right, exactly. <laughs> and maybe you lost your home. So you become beggar. Why? Because you don't know your own watch. You have the best watch, but you're not seeing it, right? Mm -hmm. Then one day you met one of your best friend and your best friend said, oh, what are you doing here on the street? And you told your best friend, oh, I don't have watch, so I'm become homeless. And your best friend said, oh, this is watch, you have watch. And at the beginning, we feel like unhappy. Don't tease me. I know I don't have watch, so I become homeless. And your friend said, no, 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 this is a watch. And your friend introduced your own watch. And you begin to read your own watch and slowly you know your watch. So now, watch can tell your time. And you look for new job. Right. And your own time, especially in the West, what they call time is money, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> and then you get very good salary, and slowly you bought a new house. Now your life becomes wonderful. So if somebody asks you, before you're not recognizing your watch, and after you recognize your watch, your life is different, but is watch different or not? Right. Watch is the same, same watch. But what is different? The recognition. Right. We recognize our self and what life, we have. What we have. We our qualities. Yes. Our special, um, our innate qualities. We all have capacity. Yeah. And we power. all have different qualities. Different qualities. We Unique. Yeah. Everybody has um, potential. Everybody has skills. Everybody has awareness, right. love and compassion, wisdom, so many things. They're different, us. but everybody has it. Has it, yes. And you've got to recognize that yes. and be proud of that. Proud of that, yes. Be proud of that yes, and yes. utilize that. I so think. what we call, if you go to forests, there's a big trees, bamboos, mushrooms, yeah. uh, the grass, and each one is unique. Mushroom cannot become tree, no. no matter what you do, cannot. But tree cannot become mushroom. Right. 
cannot eat. <laughs> and, and they all have role to play. Yes. They all have role to play in this big forest. Yes. Right. They all are unique thing. And all they unique. all have spe- all are special, yeah. and they all are holding the forest. Yeah. They all are contributing in some way. Yes. In this forest. Yes. So similar with human being, instead yes. of comparing, yes, maybe we should focus on ourselves. Yes. And see what our personal skill and talent is, yes. and work on that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Work on that, polish that, and make a life out of it. Yeah. Is that is yeah. that not true? That is the real cause of happiness. Right. Then the real joy, happiness, contentment, and the wisdom also manifest. And we will have peace and love, compassion, slowly, slowly manifest. So we got to enjoy our own self and our own yes. life, yes. Rather than trying to uh, get approval from other person all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And and at the same time, we are not saying that you should not pursue things. Right, right. Exactly. You should look for oh, your yeah, work, yeah. your life, business, whatever. Do you should you should do your best. Your best. Yeah. And as long as if you're not purposely want to harm to others, destroy others, right? Okay, right. whatever you do, right. whatever you might be, um, waiter or chef or architecture exactly. engineer, business yes. farmers, totally okay. Whatever skill you have or yes. whatever talent you have, yes, make it better on an everyday basis. Yes, you know, try to get better all the time. Yes, learning every day. Yeah. Growing every day. Special, we can learn from problems, obstacles, sufferings. They are become really good teachers. Exactly. Normally. I mean, this is what I see, you know, uh, around as well. You know, the, the examples of, of a lot of people is that no matter where they start in life. Yes. Yes. Some people can start their life from being a waiter. Yes. Yes. Some people can start their life. Being a dishwasher. Yes. Some people can start their life by being a CEO yes. in the bank. But if the person who is, I don't know, a dishwasher, let's say, I mean, I respect all jobs, but let's just say, <laughs> you know, um, if he's constantly complaining and saying, "Why am I not CEO? Why yes, am yes. I not this?" and not concentrating on what he can do best. Yes. Then he will be lost, yes. right? And then he cannot do his or her work, right? Also well, not exactly. well. And then he or she get more stress, yeah. and then it will become kind of like what we call downward right. spiral, right. Right? right? But if he if he tries to concentrate on his own work, yes, and to do the best to his ability, yes, and at the same time letting go. Yeah, Except let it go. up and down, yeah. impermanent, and try to improve on that every yes, day, yes. every day, every day. Yes, yes. You never know; he might be a restaurant owner one yes. day. Yes, true. You know, just like the other person that I was talking about, yes. he became a restaurant owner with several things. So I think if everyone just concentrates on their own skill instead yes. of comparing other people, yes, 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 and having pity on one, oneself, yes. no matter how low or humble you start in life, right, right. you concentrate. The thing that you have in your hand, yes. yes, you know, yeah, because in life I think you can only play with the cards you have dealt dealt with. Right. When we play cards, the card that we get, right, right, right. we have to play with that. Yes. I cannot say that I want to play with his card. Right. Right. Because I was dealt with this card. Right. So what I try to do is, no matter what kind of cards I'm dealt with, yes, I try to play my best. Yes. With it. Right. Yeah, and and that way, person can probably have a satisfaction yeah. more. Normally, I talk about finding balance. So in our life, a lot of up and down. So accept up and down, and let go. But letting go doesn't mean give up. No, no, no. Don't give up. No. Use your knowledge, skills, capacity. Try your best, but your mind don't too tight on the result. It's up and down. Obviously, very good, wonderful. But sometime down, we can learn more, grow more, a lot of things. So, what I call, even we want to drink the water, we have to find balance. So there, there's a three ways to drink water. First is like this: I must need to drink this water, and you tie your hand and then 
water, master. And we really tight. Mm. <laughs> so that's the first style. And the second style, we give up. Uh, I need drink this water. Water, oh, what is that? Mm. Maybe my smartphone. Mm. I will drink water later. And next day, I want to drink water. Oh, I'm tired, I will sleep first. <laughs> so, that's the second style. And third style, relax hand. Just relax, just like natural. Grab the cup and drink. So, the first one, too tight. If, if you're too tight, even bringing here to here, lot of tension. Tension. A lot of problem, extra, extra problem. But if you're too loose, if you don't make effort, you cannot drink water. So what we do, we relax, but the letting go, relax, it doesn't mean give up. You just follow flow of nature, and then you get more energy, more power, capacity, potential, and you can drink water nicely. So that is the, not just in our life, whatever we do, engage. Finding that balance right. is really important. What we call the middle way. Yeah. So the Buddha said, our action has to be middle way. Our view, belief, also need to find the middle way, middle way. And our emotion, our practice, our meditation need to find the middle way. So in order to have order in life, we need to be conscious, is it? We, we, we need, need to, to bring conscious. awareness. We need, we need awareness. Awareness, yeah. Being, yes. Like you started off your life, I remember listening to one of your discourses. In yes, YouTube, yes. And you said that while you were very young, you had this panic attacks. Yes. You were anxious. You had fear of a lot of things. Yes. And meditation helped you to get out of it. Yes. How was that? Yeah. So what I, kind of medis meditation did you do? Yeah, so I had panic attacks when I was seven, eight years old. So I was born in Samagang next to mountain Manasilu. The village is really nice. We have eight highest mountain in the world. And the village is very calm and quiet. And we have blue sky with fresh air. But panic followed me as like shadow, wherever I gone. Especially, I'm really afraid of storms, thunderstorm. Oh. In the winter, we have snowstorm and summer thunderstorm. So when the lightning comes, entire mountain will shake. <laughs> like that. And I have fear for strangers. If new people come to my village, and I feel like anxiety very strong. So I discussed this with my mom and my mom said, maybe I should learn meditation from my father. So then my mom helped me ask to my father. I was feeling shy to ask him. If he said no, I feel bad, right? Hmm. Actually, he was very happy. My father said, you really want to learn meditation, right? I said, yes. So the first meditation, what I learned is the breathing meditation. So my father said, don't try to fight with the panic attacks. Don't fight. Let panic come. Let panic go. Why? If you try to fight with the panic, panic becomes stronger. Like no dalbat, more dalbat comes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he said, don't care. But don't lose with the panic. So your mind bring with the breathing. So Normally what we call the essence of meditation is awareness. Awareness meaning like in Nepali, host, 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 right? Uh, are you breathing now? I am here. Yes, of course. We all breathing. Yeah. So when I ask you, are you breathing now? In that moment, our mind is with the breath. Oh. So that is a meditation. Actually, it's very simple. What we call mind and the breath together. So when we're breathing in, our mind knows they're breathing in. When you're breathing out, our mind knows they're breathing out. 
And then while we are doing that, then maybe panic will come or worry will come or my work for tomorrow or my to-do list, you know, tomorrow I have to go to that and I have to do that and I have to clean that, I have to make that. All this bala bala yada yada come, what I call dalbat will come. <laughs> but let them come. So breathing in, another dalbat come, breathing out and another dalbat come. And maybe two dalva, mm. three dalva, <laughs> four dalva, <laughs> no problem. What we call, as long as if, st if we still remember that we are breathing, right. we are breathing, right. just glimpse, glimpse. You cannot stay, your mind cannot stay with the breathing too long. Just right. glimpse, glimpse. You are in meditation. So if you do that, then we are learning three important things. First, we are learning being with the breath as it is. We don't need to control breath. We don't have to do any pranayam. We don't need to do any just natural breath. So that's the beginning of learning wisdom. Wisdom meaning being with the reality as it is. So we, we learn the truth. Second, what we are learning, acceptance, letting go and compassion. Because we are letting everything can come. Normally we think this is no good, you no good, they no good, he no good, she no good. But now everything's okay. So we are learning okay with not okay. Everything's okay. Even not okay is okay. Mm -hmm. So you're learning openness, letting go, compassion, forgiveness. Number three, we're learning awareness because we are not totally lost. We come back to the breath again, again, again. So we are learning awareness, concentration, meditation, samadhi, whatever we call it. So I did that. So that really helps. And, but I still want to fight with my panic attacks. I'm watching my breathing to get rid of my panic attacks. The panic comes back again. And I ask my father, you know, I really don't like to have this panic. And he said, then, beginning of your meditation, you just tell yourself, welcome panic. Mm, mm, mm. Now I did that. It helps. But still, I'm thinking, if I welcome my panic, next time, panic will not come. Uh, <laughs> so, that become like, same thing, like dog chasing tail. Right, right, it's like, right. fake welcome. But even fake welcome is really good. It has a value. So, meditation is... Uh not about trying to escape from your thoughts. Yes. It's more like accepting and observing your thoughts. Yes. Because you cannot control what comes into your mind. Yes, yes, right? yes. Right, right. That's beyond your control. Yes. But what you do with the things that comes into your mind right. is probably up to you. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's just yeah. like your smartphone. Yes. So many information, so many things is coming. Yes, yes. But what do you want to look? Yes, yes. What do you want to see is up to you. Right, right, right. So I think same with the mind. Yes. Because a lot of people go in, into meditation and say, I want to get rid of all my thoughts. I want to put away everything that comes into my mind and I just want to focus in one thing and, yeah. you know, just be at yeah. peace. Yeah. Which is impossible. Impossible. So the idea is to actually observe all your thoughts. Yes. Like you are looking at a uh, traffic in the street. Yes. And see what is happening. Yes. Right? Yes. Let's see what is happening. Yes. What kind of thoughts am I getting? What are the emotions that are affecting me? Yes. yes. You just observe it like you're looking yes. at looking like looking at a cinema, you know. Yeah. And then I think the idea is, what do I want to be controlled by? Yes. Which thoughts? Which ideas? Yeah. Isn't that the basic yeah. thing of meditation? It's like that. So, but first we need to learn with the one object. So here we are learning that how to be with the thought, emotion, mm. with the breathing. So we are learning the breath is coming and breath is going. Let breath come, let breath go. So we are learning awareness and letting go and being with the reality as it is. These three skills, sometimes what I call three lifelong skills with the breathing. Right. Then slowly, slowly we to be aware of the body. And in the body, a lot of sensation, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral sensation. We just observe. 
whatever sensation comes, let them come, let them go. They always change, right? Impermanent, change, change. Then we look at the thought. Like I want to go to a restaurant, do shopping, and then watch the thought. Thought is just like breathing. They come, they go. The breath never stay still. It's always moving. So in our mind, thoughts are moving, moving. Then emotion has a lot of sensation, word, image, picture, and the belief. Like if you're angry at somebody, sensation like burning. And the image of that person. And a lot of words, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then believe that this is not right. This is, a, shouldn't do that. This is a unfair. Mm. So these four together, then we have the anger. But when we look at the anger, when we see the pieces, then the power of anger already dim diminish. Not solid, like one giant anymore. It's become like what I call shaving foam. If you put shaving foam here, it looks like a piece of rock. But inside, full of water, full of bubbles, space. So the anger become like peace, sensation here, image there, the word, that, that. The exchange of words. Exchanging word, and the belief here. So then they are changing, changing, impermanent, impermanent, changing, changing, and they are interdependent, connected. So then anger becomes support for your meditation, awareness, just like breath. Mm. Breath becomes support for meditation. Now anger becomes support for your meditation. So you and anger become friend. Right, right. And you're not following anger. You're not fighting with anger. Right, right. Yeah. Because, you know, no matter how much you meditate or how much aware you are, life is still not going to be easy. Right? Yeah. Life is going to be easy. I've been down. Yeah. Yeah. But because you are an aware person, because you meditate, yes. you are better able to cope yes. with things. Right? Yes. Your, yes. your coping mechanism becomes stronger yeah. to cope with all kinds of yes. challenges and difficulties yes. life throws at you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and life can throw at you many things, yes, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And emotion is also not within our control. Yes, yes, yes. If you ask scientists, they say emotion is all about your hormones. Yes, yes, yes. You know? Yeah. It's all about your hormones. Right, right. You're feeling sad because there's some sort of hormone is right, playing. Right. You feel hangry. Again, your hormone is good. Right. You're feeling very lustful, sexual, right. and also be hormones. Yes, yes. So I think the idea is to build your coping mechanism uh, uh, more than anything and not expect that by doing anything, life is going to be bed of roses. Right. It's not going to be that. Yes. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, when I was young, I don't like chili. Right. Hot, hot chili. Mar marta. Yeah, kursani. Kursani, kursani. <laughs> If I eat chilies, then brings me so much suffering, pain, loss, taste of food, sweating, and my stomach burn. Big problem. But then all my colleagues, they eat a lot of korsani, the chili. Mm. And I think, oh, I should learn how to eat chili, the korsani. So I, I learn. Now, the korsani, chili, for me, very good. Become cause of happiness. Oh, it's really painful. Burning my stomach, burning my thumb, sweating. Terrible. But that pain and hurt become cause of happiness. <laughs> because you got used to it. Yeah. How, how I change my perception, the relation with that Kursa. pain, Kursani, yeah. depend on how we perceive, right. how we look at. So same thing, everything in our life that there's no such thing yeah. as happiness, suffering out there. No. It is how you look at it. How you look at it. It is yes. in your mind. And life will, life will give you kursani, life will give you sugar. Yes, <laughs> always there. <laughs> there's sugar, there's a kursani, right. there's so many bitter things, there's so many delicious things. But as I mentioned before, if we slowly, slowly train our mind, transform our mind, then everything becomes cause of happiness. 
mm. everything become cause of freedom liberation uh, lastly rinpoche before we go you have written a best seller book right joy of life it has also been translated into nepali yes. i think uh, yes jeevan ko majja is it yes jeevan ko majja what made you write this book and uh, uh what's in this book what it is all about just in a brief yes uh way can you explain it to us because yeah. it has become a best seller yes. according to new york times yes so this book is about uh, what i learned meditation since 9 years old that really helped me transform my life and at the same time i have a lot of discussion with the scientists like physics neuroscience psychology cognitive science so they test my brain and all these things so i was thinking maybe we can put this true tradition the wisdom tradition from east and knowledge whatever scientific discovery put together will be really nice so then oh. i teach about those science meditation and some of the transcribe and i have some the um, editor writer and we put together become the book joy of living so this is my first book joy of living and we translate in nepal so now in nepali my book is available jivan <laughs> kumar ja right i yeah, I, I, think so. i have a copy of that yeah yes i don't have the uh, english uh, uh, version right. i will i will give you one i day. have a, i have the nepali version that yes. you gave Rinpoche, thank you so much. You know, we need we need people like you. We need uh, your discourses in this chaotic world where, if you really really look at life, life actually has doesn't have much meaning, does it? We're born, we do something in between, we die, we go. Yeah. So if you look at it, but, li- but at the same time, if we try to discover the real quality of our inside, life is. exciting right colorful ab is good sometime down is better <laughs> <laughs> so that should be the purpose of life yeah. is it yeah for me the panic attacks really help my life and normally i am consider my panic attacks as my teacher and my best friend so because of panic attacks i wrote these books so take your disadvantages in life and to turn transform. it into your make advantage friends. yeah make yes. friends obstacle become opportunity problem become solution wow thank you so much you're impressive thank, thank you thank you very much thank you so much your for your time i'm very appreciate it was lovely conversation thank you